Now, if you live in uh, parts of Mexico, you're used to being terrorised. Heavily armed groups, usually uh, drug traffickers, extort, rape or murder thousands of people. Now, though, uh, whole villages who were hostage to their barbaric practices are beginning to take up arms. Well, our correspondents, Laurence, Laurence Gavillier, Matthew Coma and Yoen Grillo, have visited one town where 35,000 people have been living under the terror of a cartel for 12 years. So now they're fighting back. The weight of years of injustice lies on Jimena's shoulders. She was just 17 when she was abducted and raped. There were several witnesses, but nobody to rescue her. He said if I wanted to keep my family safe, to be quiet and stop yelling. After that night of terror, Jimena lived three years in the same neighborhood as him and had to endure his mockery whenever they crossed paths. She soon realized justice would never be served. Here, everybody knows who they are, but nobody said anything. When I went to the lawyer, I took the medical certificate, and he asked me some questions. He asked me if they were part of those people, and I said yes. He said he'd contact me, he gave me his email, and I gave him mine, but he never contacted me. Everybody around here knows who those people are. Los Caballeros Templarios, the Knights Templar, a mystical name for a less noble reality. They are a bloodthirsty drug cartel who acted with impunity for years. Until last February 24th, when overwhelmed by their crimes, 3,000 men took up arms to hunt them down. With a few guns, they were able to take them by surprise. Since we didn't have guns, they thought we would never stand up to them. They made us pay for everything, and even wanted to abuse our wives and daughters. These improvised policemen now stand guard in order to keep them away. Like all these men, Dr. Manuel Mireles now divides his time between his job and the defense of the village. His walkie-talkie is always on. 24-7. This is what keeps us alive. They warn us when trucks carrying armed men enter through the surrounding ranches, and then we get ready. They aren't paid a penny, but their safety is priceless. This morning, Manuel visits Raimundo. The farmer was shot in the leg three days ago near his land. The Knights Templar wanted, as always, to take his hard-earned money. They start by intimidating you. They drove up in four or five pickups and said, you're going to do this or that for us. I'm going to send someone to collect the money. What could we do? Raimundo sold his kilo of lemons at five pesos, two of which he had to give to the knights. They also took a day's worth of wages from all the workers nearby. This way, the knights made millions of dollars per month. Those who resisted paid with their lives. That was their method. If they were angry with someone, they gutted them alive. This was just two kilometers from here. Whole families, seven, eight people in a single execution. Raimundo's family could hear the screams at six in the morning. They told us, they're executing someone over there. Let's go see. But who would go out there? No one. According to the statement from the hospital, 250 whole families were killed in Tepalcatepec in the last 10 years. As absurd as it may seem, the Knights distributed a so-called code of honor even in the city hall, a chivalrous behavior rulebook. I swear and promise to fight to protect the oppressed, the widowed, and the orphaned. Last December, in this town alone, they raped 14 girls and got them pregnant. The army came as reinforcement two months ago, but they only monitor a few strategic points, like these hills where the Knights are sheltered. However, everybody here knew their men. The residents have provided a list of the key identified criminals, but no one has been arrested. While these people are still alive, we won't disarm ourselves. The army is here, and they won't dare to come like they used to, with 15, 20 pickups all filled with armed men. They will only come one by one. They will come through the military checkpoints. We know they're already in town, and we know they will try to kill us off one by one. 
Three days after this report was filmed, 22 people were killed in skirmishes in the surrounding villages. Manuel and his men stand alone against them. Nobody knows how much longer, but they are willing, if necessary, to die on the battlefield.